If you're a fan of Hunter x Hunter, then you might have caught yourself asking the question, which Hunter x Hunter opening is best? Okay, maybe not, but I'm gonna cover it anyway. However, this video will only cover the 2011 version. Also, before we start, though Hunter x Hunter has six different openings, there are only a few variations of the song. So when I say best opening, I'm only talking about the visuals and how the visuals complement the song. Anyway, now that we've cleared that up, let's get into it. I'm gonna start off with the worst and work my way up to the best. So starting off with the worst of the six. In sixth place we have the opening to the Greed Island arc. While the opening does have some pretty good individual shots, it doesn't take away from the fact that all it really does is showcase the characters and then spoil half of the plot points. Just to mention some, before we even know about any of it, we get shown Kirua and Gon's Nen power. We then get shown the fact that Hisoka, Gon and Kirua are gonna be working together, and then in the middle of the opening we also get showed that Gen threw the bomber. And I'm not talking foreshadowing here, I'm saying that it showed us without even trying to cover it up. Now number 5, we have the opening for the Heavens Arena arc. It's not as bad as the Greed Island arc, but the fact of the matter is, the second half of the opening is the exact same as the first Hunter Hunter opening. They only actually changed the first part, so I'll not take a look at the second part till we actually get to the first opening. Makes sense, right? We start off pretty good by getting a nice shot of the different characters, and we also get a look at Diorio outside of the Hunter community. It then cuts to actually quite a nice shot of Tsushi using Ren while Wing is standing beside him with a serious look on his face. A thing to note here is that the song actually assists this shot very well. When the shot with Tsushi starts playing, the words you just try again is being sung. Which actually does a pretty good job of telling what the Nen training is gonna be like. It then shows the members of the Phantom Troop and gets our expectations up. Unfortunately, that's when it cuts back to the same as the first opening, which is disappointing to say the least. Especially since they just used two different shots to set up a dark atmosphere, which they then just completely threw out the window. In fourth place we have the original first opening of Hunter x Hunter. While it's not something extraordinary, we do have some nicely timed shot and some okay symbolism. Already at the start we have Gong opening up two huge doors, which of course represents how he's currently opening the doors to the world of the hunt, a world in which he has no idea what's going to happen. We then see some birds, which seem to be from his hometown, flying into the distance. In this instance symbolizing Gong leaving the nest. We also get a good insight into the characters, considering that this is only the first opening. With the shot of Kudapika, we get to see a glimpse of his scarlet eyes, and thereby his hatred. The same thing can be said about the shot with Kirua. He starts off with smiling like a kid his age actually should, but then quickly turns it into a devious smile, showcasing that he's actually not how he seems. We also get a pretty sweet shot of Hisuka and Irumi. The Hunter x Hunter openings like to put the main villain at the end, so at the end of the first couple of openings, including this one, we get a shot of Hisoka inviting Gon towards him. In third place we have the Yorkshin City arc. The first part of this opening is the same as the second opening, so again we have some laziness, but there's a huge difference. The Heavens Arena arc opening built up one atmosphere and then changed to another without notice. Whereas the Yorkshin City arc chose to expand on the dark and ominous atmosphere set up by the shot of the Phantom Troop. We get to see several shots of each of the Phantom Troop members, but what really makes this shot worthwhile is Kurolo's face in the background watching over every single member. However, there are two exceptions. It does not show Hizuka since he's actually not a member, and it also doesn't show Ubogin. But that's where the next shot comes into play. The bullet from Pakunoda's gun transitions nicely into a shot of Uvagin standing in a blinding light. This could be referring to the fact that Uvagin dies, since he's separated from the other members and is standing alone in a white light. Then, just like the openings before, it turns to show Hizuka at the end, still showing him as the final boss, even though Krolo is still in play. In second place, we have the Kimera and Dark opening. It starts off with a nice shot of Meruem grasping a ball of light underwater and moving up transitioning into an image of the earth. The fact that he starts underwater and then moves up is probably meant to symbolize his ability to evolve and go from one stage to another. One of the main focuses of this opening is Kite, and while the Kimera and Ark opening also spoils quite a bit, it's not as obvious and in your face as the Greed Island Ark opening. 
This time it's done a little bit under the radar, accompanied by some beautiful visuals. And I can't stress enough just how good the shot of Gong and Kite is. Kite's face disappearing and turning into Pito is definitely a huge spoiler, and it could have been more subtle, but in my opinion it was really well done. Not too obvious, and it adds a shot very fitting of the opening. Also, the change in Gon's tone when Pito's face appears is priceless. Another spoiler comes when we see a glimpse of Gon's rage, but it doesn't really give any context and it's very brief, so it's done very differently from the Greed Island arc. I also want to quickly talk about the shot at the end. We see the three royal gods rushing toward Meruem, and each one standing on a different plane than the other. Pito is basically standing on the ground, Yuppie is standing on a slightly taller rock, and Poof is standing on the tallest, that is, until it pans to Meduim, whose leaps and bounds above the rest and almost seen as a god. But let's take a look at the placement and think about it just for a little bit. Pito is standing on the lowest plane, and funnily enough, she was the first one to die. Then followed by Yuppie, Poof, and then finally Meduim. This last shot is basically foreshadowing done right. It's pretty genius when you think about it. We also get a nice shot of Gon looking up in anger and Kirua looking down in despair while Meduim ultimately washes over them. Overall a very good opening, but not quite good enough to qualify for the first spot. Because at first place we have the chairman election arc. Of course we start off by seeing Netaro standing proud and the first thing that really stands out the most when starting this opening is how well it's choreographed to go with the music. The beats of the first three sentences create a perfect metronome for introducing 12 different characters related to this arc. I think it's easy if I show you with the music here, so pay attention to how the words and the visuals coincide. We also get a very interesting transition with an X erased to show the regular title and then a black brush painting over it, which is definitely a nice touch. Then there's the shot with Gon and Kirua walking different directions. The shot is pretty self-explanatory but still very nice. We see Kirua walking in despair, not knowing what to do, but then Aruka comes into the picture and Kirua acts surprised but then gets a smile on his face. Partially because he actually just wants to see Aruka again, and also just because he wants to save Gon. Then after a few well animated shots of Goto, Hisuka and Irumi, we get to see a shot of Pattystone, already showing how he almost has two personalities. We start off by seeing his face covered in shadows, and then quickly followed up by him putting on a mask and beginning to smile, while light envelops him. Then there's the shot of Gon's hand reaching up from something akin to the abyss, and Kirua grabbing it to pull him up. So simple, yet so extremely effective. After that, there's a beautiful shot of Aruka transitioning into Nanika. The rest of the opening after that is just a well-animated opening, which showcases the characters' abilities and relationships with each other. And of course, we still have the traditional involvement of the words, you can smile, as we see Gon smiling into the camera enveloped in light. Anyway, that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe, whatever you're feeling up to, and I'll see y'all in the next video.